Choosing the best graphics card to buy can be a tricky process at the best of times, but with so many options out right now, it's harder than ever. So in this video, I'm going to try and make that decision a little bit easier by running through the best graphics card options for your next PC build. Whether you've got $200 to spend on a card like this, or more like $2,000 on a top-end, blazing fast GPU, I'll be running through the best cards for 1080p, 1440p and 4K gaming. Explaining what all the different naming schemes mean and showing detailed benchmark numbers for all of the current GPUs presently available. Let's do this. The Gigabyte Aura 17 range of gaming notebooks are fantastic for playing the latest AAA titles at the best settings. With a 1080p 360Hz display, these are awesome for competitive gaming, featuring 12th gen Intel Core processors, which boast phenomenal single and multi-threaded performance for gaming and productivity applications. Learn more and check out the full range at the first links in the description below. I'm going to split this video out into four key sections. First, I'm going to explain what all the different naming schemes mean for AMD and Nvidia. Second, I'll run through the best 1080p cards. Third, the best 1440p cards. And fourth and finally, the best 4K GPUs. So what do all of the different naming schemes actually mean? Well, you've got AMD and Nvidia who each have their own systems for naming GPUs. On the Nvidia side of the equation, you've got RTX 4000 and RTX 3000 series. 4000 series is newer, but 3000 series gives you more options of GPUs to choose from. The two digit number at the end of the name of the card indicates how powerful it is. So the 4090 is the highest end, followed then by the 4080. And on the 3000 series, the same rules apply. The 3050 is the lowest power card, 3060, 70, and as you go up through the numbers, it gets, well, more expensive, but also delivers more performance. Nvidia cards also have this weird designation called TI on some of the cards. If a card is a TI edition, it's basically a middle ground between the non-TI variant of that card and the next number. So for example, the 4070 TI is expected to be a middle ground between the 4070 and the 4080. AMD is pretty similar. RX 7000 and 6000 are your lineups with the three digit number at the end indicating the skew and how powerful the card is. So the 7900, 7800, 7700 is how we're expecting the 7000 series to line up. On the 6000 series, you've obviously got 6900, 6800, 6700, and the same with AMD as Nvidia, the XT designation is a bit like TI. It provides a boost to that card's non-XT equivalent performance. If you then amalgamate all of the current GPUs into a big long list and order them roughly by performance, you get something like like this. Feel free to pause the video or check out the first link below for this full list. Occasionally some of these cards will swap in their order depending on the game you're playing, but we'll explain that more in just a moment. This is intended as a rough how powerful is my GPU guide. So then with all of this data in mind, which are the best budget GPUs you can buy right now? For 1080p gaming, someone who wants to spend less than $350, ideally quite a bit less, this is the category for you. Well on the budget end of the equation, you've got two main options, one for Nvidia, one for AMD. The NVIDIA option is the RTX 3050. That's going to be a compact card like this one from Gigabyte. All the cards in our lineup today will be recommending the general GPU name, then manufacturers like Gigabyte, Asus, MSI make their own versions, which to be honest with you do provide a performance difference, but not by a huge amount. The 3050 is an ideal choice for 1080p gaming if you want access to NVIDIA ray tracing and NVIDIA's DLSS technology, but it's not the best card for those of you shopping on a budget. Instead, the AMD 6600 series of cards is. That includes the 6600, the 6600 XT, and the 6650 XT, which I've got just down here. Now, the 6600 is the best budget option, but if you've got the cash, I'd recommend the 6650 XT. Coming in at a very competitive price point, it beats out the NVIDIA RTX 3060, which is the card above the 3050 in terms of performance. Ray tracing isn't as mature but AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution provides a good alternative to NVIDIA DLSS. If you want the best card for 1080p gaming right now, the 6650 XT 
is the one for you. Whether you're playing Fortnite, Apex, Valorant, Overwatch 2, or even AAA titles like the new Warzone 2.0 and Modern Warfare 2, this card has you covered. And AMD have done a grand job with the 6650. It's also worth noting AMD's 6000 series reviews have to be taken with a pinch of salt due to driver updates and game optimizations that originated because AMD were so far behind Nvidia when they last responded with their 6000 series has meant that many of the data points for the 6650 XD have actually gotten better. In some titles you can gain 10 or 20 FPS so try not to put too much emphasis on two or one year old reviews that haven't been updated recently. So that's our budget GPU pick and AMD then seem to be the winner on this one. But what about if you want to go a bit more mainstream? You want something that's very very good for 1080p but also has significant performance for 1440p. Well our best 1440p budget oriented card would be Nvidia's RTX 3060 Ti. Now this basically takes the original 3060, gives it that Ti boost we talked about earlier, but when Nvidia were making this card I think they got a bit carried away and their Ti boost was sort of supercharged more than normal, making this a card that punches well above its weight. So much so that upon release it nearly made the 3070, which is around $100 more at MSRP, obsolete. I mean since when did a brand want to cannibalise sales of the more expensive card for the cheaper card? But that's exactly what they did and this thing is awesome, 1440p, awesome. 1080p, awesome, chuck a game at it and it's gonna chew through it. It's also got plenty of VRAM and is available in more budget oriented cooler designs. If you look say for example at the size difference between the average 3070 and the average 3060 Ti, there's too many GPUs on the table and I'm trying to not, not edit them over. You can see here it's a pretty stark difference. That's a lot smaller than this, meaning it will fit into smaller cases and it's just a bit more accessible overall for more gaming PC builds. So that's the more budget oriented 1440p card. But what if you want something with a bit more oomph? You want something with a bit more power? Well, I'm afraid to say it's an NVIDIA win again at 1440p. The RTX 3070 is a card I would avoid because the 60 Ti is a better bet, but the 3070 Ti gives you a performance boost and you'll see the same thing with an RTX 3080. Now, you might be thinking, James, you've just recommended me buy a 3080 in 2023. Isn't that card two years old and has since been replaced by this, the RTX 4080? In short... It's complicated, but no. Nvidia have come under fire for their latest cards. Their new 4080 is $1,200 at MSRP. The 3080 can be found now for what, 600, 650? That makes the 3080 still a great recommendation, even nowadays, as it doesn't have the extra cost associated with these new cards. Something I'm gonna come on to in more detail shortly. Yes, Nvidia have released the 3080 Ti and other cards since, but the 3080 does hold its own as a top tier card for high end 1440p and a bit of 4K gaming. Predominantly though, if you're gaming at 1440p, the 3060 Ti or 3070 Ti would be my two preferential shouts. It stacks up well in all the latest titles, ray tracing and DLSS is solid too, and if you just want something that's gonna work, the 3070 Ti is absolutely the bet I would consider. So now then, we've gone through the best 1440p cards, but what about 4K? This is where some of the new GPUs come into play, but before that, if you want a game at 4K on a budget, Pick up a 3080. Uh, that's it. That's all my recommendation for budget 4K. The 3080 has got serious legs for 4K gaming, as you can see. And we've had some pretty strong results using this card at that high resolution. But what if you want the ultimate gaming experience, James? I want the best of the best, or at least nearly the best of the best. Well, you've got a few options and the market has got, well, a bit crazy at the moment in terms of what those options look like. Let's move our humble AMD 6650 XT out the way. Sunshine, your time has gone. And bring in this, the AMD Radeon 7900 XTX. So at the high end of the market now, you've got AMD and Nvidia tussling against each other. Nvidia have got the 4090 and the 4080, while AMD have the 7900 XTX and the 7900 XT. That's not confusing the tall AMD. Could you not have differentiated the names by more than one X? Uh, anyway, uh, uh, it's a lost cause. So let's keep this simple. If you want the very best GPU on the market, the RTX 4090 is that card. AMD's new options haven't competed, they won't compete, and there's no rumors that they're gonna try to compete with this GPU. It's very expensive, like, like nearly $1,600 or something. Latest pricing and availability will be linked below, and it does change, so bear that in mind. But if you want the best of the best, and you're willing to open 
open your wallet and give Nvidia all of your money, then this is the card for you. But what if you want top tier 4K performance for about $1,000? You don't want to spend stupid money on a 4090 and you frankly accept you don't really need it. That's where things get complicated. So the RTX 4080 has been, well, slated a bit really, because it's too expensive. It's $1,200, making it nearly double the MSRP of the RTX 3080, the card that traditionally this would replace. Nvidia are saying, technically the 4080 is going to stand alongside the 3080 as a separate GPU. Bullshit is what that is. It's complete rubbish. This will always replace the 3080 one day. It's the same reason that the 3080 and the 2080 didn't coexist for more than six months. So I, I don't buy that at all. And Nvidia came under some rightful heat. AMD then responded with their 7900 XT and XTX, the most expensive of which is $1,000 at MSRP, $200 lower than the 4080. This was a good thing and it provided more performance than a 4082, which makes the 7900 XTX arguably just the overall better buy. But there's another spanner in the works. Why aren't these things ever simple? And that is that the RTX 4080 has evidently sold so poorly that it's now below MSRP, being sold here in the UK, for example, at about £1,100, even as low as 1050 where the RX 7900 XTX, which is perceivably a better graphics card, is now costing more than its MSRP, making, in some instances, at least for now, this cheaper than that. How complicated. Basically, I wouldn't pay more than about $1,100, $1,050 for the 7900 XTX. And if this is below $1,100 or £1,100 equivalent, I'd pick up this. So the 4080 then still seems to have a bit of a market position, even if Nvidia fluffed the launch a little bit. If you look at things like the Steam hardware survey as well, and this next point applies to the whole video today, people do have a tendency to prefer to go for an Nvidia GPU. The perception is that they're a bit more refined. And to be honest with you, that perception would be right. So bear that in mind, as well when looking at a card, you'll always, always, always pay a little bit more for the Nvidia alternative. It's the same reason people buy an iPhone because perceivably it's more polished than an Android phone. I don't want to get into the ins and outs of calling AMD Android and Nvidia Intel, Nvidia, no, Nvidia Apple, not Intel. Wow, this is all going very wrong. But the point I'm trying to get at is that Nvidia's market share has been so good for so long that retailers and Nvidia and the board partners, MSI, Gigabyte, etc., can probably get away with charging a little bit more, at least for now, while AMD regained that reputation. So to summarize, if you want the best budget GPU, you want a 6600 non-XT. Got some more money to spend, 6650 XT. Got even more money to spend, now you're balling, 3060 Ti. Even more cash and you want good 1440p and 4K gaming, 3070 Ti, then the 3080, then the 7900 XTX on the proviso that it's lower than $1,100. And if not, and this is below $1,100, the 4080. If you've got money to burn, you want one thing and one thing only, the RTX 4090. This might be one of the most chaotic GPU roundup videos I've ever done. But I think I've illustrated all the points. And if you can't be bothered with the chitter chat of this video, I'll leave all the links to the best options below. If you enjoyed this video though, get subscribed. Thanks for tuning in. As always, we'll see you in the next one. Or at least I hope we will. That would be bad if not.